Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. I feel like I've got two heads. I've been uh, making five videos a day on the JD uh, trial over, uh, you know, the non-Bachelor News on the Dave Neal show. And then I've got you guys here in the offseason where we've been scraping the barrel. So I hope you appreciate my dancing here. This is like, I feel like Lindsay Lohan in the, uh, what was the movie where she, she did the sister, Parent Trap, you know what I mean? Or the original version of Parent Trap, which never gets love. Either way, I digress. Follow me on Instagram, at Neals. That's right. I got a mustache. Either you like it or you don't, it's a cookie sweeper, baby. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal for private membership-only content. I got the stash because I'm filming a very small part in a friend's movie this afternoon, so I'll be um, I'll be uh, playing a, um, I think a 1970s. You'll have to see. Go, to, go on my Instagram. I'll post a photo later today at Dean Neals. All right, let's get into it. We got Blake continues to fight the Bachelor lies. I'm all about it. Share your truth, Blake. It's your platform. It's your social media. Call it as you see it. He did an AMA. I think he's really good at these. It's really good for keeping engagement, which is what you need to do if you're going to stay in the algorithm's good grace. Someone asked a question, have you watched the new show? So Blake is on a new show. Do we have his uh, Instagram? Let's get. Let's go to his Instagram. He's on a new show here. Um, will it be super popular? God only knows. It's going to be on the Paramount Network, which, by the way, I mean, they got Yellowstone. They got some good TV shows, so no hate on the Paramount Network. It's called All Star Shore, first ever party competition show. I think what I'm going to do is, once it premieres on June 29th, I'm going to wait a day or two and see if other people are watching. And the uh, truth usually comes out. If it's a fun show and people love it, they'll let it be known. And then we'll get back to you guys on whether or not I invest my time into more of this nonsense. But as we know, um, one week before, or you know, a week and a half before Bachelor Bachelorette 22 starts, and because of that, maybe there'll be some more eyeballs on it. Good for them for getting out there early. All right, let's go. So someone asked, have you watched the new show that you're on, All-Star Shore? How do you know they won't edit you poorly like Bachelor in Paradise? And then his response is, there is a difference between a poor edit and one, what happened to me in Paradise. Yeah, like a poor edit would be like, Jed got a poor edit. It doesn't mean he didn't deserve the edit, but they clearly made sure that Hannah Brown came out on top. They didn't share, you know, whatever, right? We got, it, we got the point. Poor edit can go to someone who gets in a fight with somebody and the edit doesn't show why the fight started, you know, that type of thing. If I was to just get a poor edit or a cast member was to, you can usually come back from that. That's why I was always so angry at production. If I did something on camera, then yeah, I deserve it. But to have my entire narrative created by production from word of mouth and stories, most not true, that was frustrating. And I don't know if I'll ever understand why they wanted to bury me so bad. Even on this new show, if I was to get painted the worst I could after knowing what happened while filming, it wouldn't even be close to the person I was painted as in Paradise. This new show is a new beginning, and I'm excited for, for y'all to see it. And yeah, of course, we've covered this extensively. Blake Horstman was accused of, you know, you call it like on if, if, if everything's on a spectrum, he was accused of slightly um, being, uh, you know, um, uh, it's, it's, it's hard it's hard to even say without it sounding so heinous, but he was basically soft me too. He was soft me too as lying lying to women to sleep with them and this and that. And then he posted the, uh, you know, he did the old nuclear code where he posted his tweets, his truth, I'm sorry, his text messages, which completely showed he was being painted in a picture that wasn't true. And part of the angry footage of him running down the beach was really just him running to the bathroom. I mean, they could make a villain out of me so quickly just because I, whenever I'm just like, said like, Whenever I'm just like, look at my face, right? If I'm not smiling, I just look angry. My, my fiance was like, Dave, what are you so mad about? I'm like, mad about it. I'm just thinking about what I'm going to get for dinner. I'm not mad at all. I'm very happy, actually. Life's going well. So anyway, that's what he posted. Let's just read a couple of the comments here. God knows what they think. I think most people on this point are on the side of Blake, understanding that producer manipulation does, exif does exist. I'll read a few comments here. On one hand, I do see how the constant complaining is annoying, but I also know if I was accused of silencing a, a, a victim of, you know what, I'm not saying it, on national television, I sure as hell wouldn't be over it. Someone said, please explain. I didn't watch this season. Blake had the perfect edit on, Be on Becca's season. All right, let's just explain what this commenter said. He was the heartbroken, rejected front runner. Becca even said she thought it would be him all along and changed her mind very near the end. Then Blake got on Bachelor in Paradise and it all went to hell. Prior to the season, he hooked up with two women, Kaylin and Christina, back to back at Stagecoats. Was also talking to Tasha at Stagecoats and visited Hannah G in her hometown, even though she said not to. 
Once on Bachelor in Paradise, he had his first pick for a date, and instead of taking Hannah G, who he allegedly wanted the most, he chose Tasha. and later said the producers talked him into it. When they returned, he decided he did really want Hannah G all along, and Tasha felt let on. At the same time, Dylan was re- really into Hannah G also. As we know, Dylan and Hannah G are engaged, live together. Then Kaylin showed up on the beach and told everybody about their hookup, but made it seem like Blake asked her to lie and, ke- and keep it a secret. By the way, this is very well... The thing I'm reading right now is very well written on Reddit. Blake was also being edited as shady, like he was avoiding her when he really wasn't. She confronted him and made it seem like he played and silenced her. Yeah, that was the big deal. He silenced her after hooking up. Post-taping, but during airing of the season, Blake released texts confirming that Kaylin did know and agreed that they were just a hookup and was exaggerating their connection on screen. Christina also later joined the beach and confronted Blake about the back-to-back hooking up at Stagecoach, although she wasn't as upset. By this point, though, everyone was over Blake and pretty much Team Dylan in the Hannah G. Love Triangle. Blake's rep took a massive hit. Producers definitely upped the drama with editing, for example, making it seem like he ran from Kaylin when really he was going to the bathroom. But it originated from Blake's own actions preseason, something he's unwilling to take any part of the responsibility for. First of all, I think that's disingenuous. I don't think Blake should take the responsibility for having consensual and casual sex with multiple people at different times. I don't think he was leading people on. In fact, the text message is so Kaylin showed up to his um, stagecoach um, hotel after he told her not to. You know what I mean? This person comments, the funny thing is, despite all that, he still wanted back on Bachelor in Paradise last year. I think he was hoping to pursue Becker or someone on TV to redeem himself, and the producers told him no. Since then, every few weeks, he posts about how the producers are evil. Um, I think that's perfectly fine. I don't know if it's um, confirmed that he tried to go back on Bachelor in Paradise. I'm not sure about that. But I think it's perfectly fine he continues to share his story because I think, unfortunately, with most things in the media, the first story you read is the one that sticks the most. So, of course, watching a highly edited, highly curated dating show um, paint him as someone who's silencing victims not a good look if it were true and there is no evidence that it uh, that it is. And it's another example of producers just, you know, this would never happen in real life. In real life, if someone talked trash to you, you either confront them or you start talking trash about them, you know? you know, And, and that's why people don't share, uh, for the most part, um, un, unsubstantiated rumors or don't, don't uh, say vitriol they know is not true because karma will come and get you. But for these producers... I can't tell you one producer's name. Karma's not coming to get them. They're hiding behind a show, an NDA, lawyers, the right to share what we want because we have an ironclad contract and you agreed to be on the show. It's all garbage. On a separate story, let's cover this. Here was Blake on the Behind the Rose podcast with Ben Higgins. And here's what Ben had to say about meeting up with Chris Harrison after Chris Harrison was canceled. Let's have a watch here. Mentioned that you had played with him at Pebble Beach and had a round with him. Yeah. It, was that the first time you'd seen him since everything has happened and like talked with him and like, what's he up to these days and everything? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've like FaceTimed him, called him on the phone. Not often. We used to talk a lot. It was kind of sad. I, I think, I think for him, he just needed some space from everything. So it was the first time I'd seen him in person. It was awesome. Uh, Chris has been really good to me. Now I don't, I, I'm not, I've always like prefaced this with saying the shows and, and most people would agree It'd be impossible for me to argue the show has been bad to me at any level. It's been good for me at every level. I have nothing to complain about from my experience. Mm -hmm. Um, So Chris was really good to me too. He helped me navigate it. He sat with me when I felt um, overwhelmed or when I felt uh, like I didn't belong or when I felt like I wasn't doing anything right and I couldn't figure out like he did. So he sat with me and, and, and what I appreciated was he sat with me when cameras weren't going. So speaking of, all right. So little love there from Ben Higgins to Chris uh, regarding his mentorship there, and some other comments. Um, again, we're just going all over the place on Blake here. Blake and Giannina, of course, are on that dating show together. First photo of them actually posted. We've known for months now that they're dating, but they're going to be on this dating show together. And she gushes over Blake. She says he's respectful, funny, and spontaneous. She never watched the Bachelor franchise before meeting Blake. Well, you know, I I always look like a huge Blake fan. And um, I do like him. I like what he's done with his career. I like how he's uh, pivoted, pivoted, pivot, uh, pivoted away from Bachelor, but used his audience to fuel his DJing career. I think that's really good. And I also think he was wronged. You know, that's it. So that's why I share these stories, because I feel like, you know, when someone's wronged, you just keep talking about it. So here she, she said he's very respectful, but I don't think that 
that they know just how funny and spontaneous and dedicated he is, she said at the iHeart Festival. He's going, he's doing his DJ gig now, and just watching him reach all these new heights and all these new, go all these goals. I don't think a lot of people know that he has it in him, but he definitely does. I've never watched a Bachelor franchise or any of that, so I didn't know who he was. He seemed familiar to me, and he just flashed his big old smile at me, and that's how I met him right on the beach. Oh, so they met on the beach. Uh, Giannina Gibelli says, um, uh, explained why she decided to do another reality TV show after appearing on first season of Love is Blind. The reason you do another reality TV show is because people already know you, you know what I mean? Just might as well lean into it. After I did Love is Blind, I felt very comfortable being vulnerable and I saw how many people really related with me and I didn't want to do another dating show. Then I was called to do this fun challenge show in the middle of the beach off the coast of Africa. I felt like this would be a good time to show a different side of myself. Love is Blind was so heavy and this was very fun and party. This is the best show I've ever done. I could not be happier with All Star Shore. There are lots of surprises that will unfold. There's lots of sides to every single cast member that was put on there. And the fact that we felt we all fell in love with each other, every single person on that cast is my favorite person. I don't think you were expecting it from such an eclectic group of people. Well, that's very interesting. If it's true that they all fell in love, is there some sort of formula for dating shows that actually work as we know bachelor has like a four percent success rate bachelor in paradise may be a little bit better because there's co-mingling you get that hierarchy of like fighting for each other versus things being served up to you it's like the difference between like catching your dinner like hunting your dinner versus going to a restaurant having it provided for you because that's what it is if you're the bachelorette you have 25 men just vying for your attention and you get to pick and choose who you want if you're on bachelor in paradise you might like a guy but someone else might like him so you'd be like all right i, I better catch some feels i'm getting jealous that's my body saying that this is the one you know that type of deal anyway you know maybe she just sold me on watching it let me know will you be watching his new reality show um and uh and what and and, and let me know what else is good with life very slow time of the year here but that's what we do we barrel scrape during the slow season and um uh, more info coming your way. If you want extra content that you're not getting right now, go to the Dave Neal Show. I got like four videos a day coming out. I am just churning out content on the Dave Neal Show. It's not just Johnny and Amber. I've got a Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie video you might like. Let me know what you think. And also, more content on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Bye, everybody.